Hello, future year 12. Let's fire up this presentation. Welcome to Geography. My name is Mr. Reese, and I'm going to talk you through what geography is at A level. It's quite different from what you've done at, at GCSE. It's much more theories, much more, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot better, I think, anyway. Right, here we go. So why study it? And there's loads of reasons why to study it. It's one of those general degrees, or general, sorry, um, GCSEs, A level, A levels, um, where you can go either way. You can go science, you can go towards arts and humanities, right? But it's always in the news. It explains a lot about what's going on, why the world's changing, how it's changing, as you'll see from some of the next few slides. All right, here we go. So the first topic we're going to do it's globalization. And you can see from some of those questions there, <clears throat> there's a lot going on and there's a lot of change happening that this process of globalization um, and our studies can help us to understand. Um, so have a quick look at those. See if you can find out the answers. See if you can think what your thoughts are. All right. So the next thing we do is we, we look at regenerating places. Places are constantly changing, partly as a result of the process we've just seen, you know, this idea of globalization. But people, you know, cities are expanding, getting bigger, um, build new buildings and new styles of buildings coming up, or they're just falling apart in the case, as you can see here, of, of Detroit in America. So we want to look at what are those processes that shape places, that create places, and that have created uh, places. But then also kind of look at our biases. Why do people, you know, think negatively or positively about, about places? I'm sure there's some places that you think of really negatively that, Somebody else that's going into the class is going to think, actually, that's that's where I live. That's a normal, nice place. So there'll, there'll be those sort of tensions. Um, there's a few questions there for you to have a little think of as well. Okay, this is another topic that, that we, we potentially can do. And I think it's really important to start to think during this, this coronavirus time and this age of, of global pandemics, we want to look at, as geographers, we want to look at health human rights intervention as well, but we need to look at that critically. We need to ask ourselves questions around who's got access to things like the vaccine. And we can look at that at a number of scales. We could look at the local level, you know, in a city like Bristol, are there variations in access and um, uptake in in the vaccine and, and this and there are they clearly are and they they're linked to a number of wider processes um partly that stuff we just looked at was regenerating places you know places being left behind and left to rot almost um leading to a whole host of of negative situations that kind of we see when we look at, at the risks of coronavirus you know um and other aspects like that. We can look at the national level and see there's a north-south divide in terms of that, with, particularly within England. And then we can look, you know, internationally, there are some countries have, have done very well with coronavirus, but also some countries, particularly with the vaccine, have had the money to buy it, and other countries haven't. So, for example, we think most of Britain will be vaccinated by the end of this year. Some countries that aren't so uh, rich, it's going to take till 2024. And that's not just because of their, who they are and where they are, but because basically they can't compete. They don't have the money to compete. So there's, there's a fairness element to this idea of health or a lack of fairness. Um, so there's a few things there for you to have a quick look at and have a think about. And then this is the final topic around superpowers, for, sorry, final topic for human geography anyway, superpowers. The two big ones there, the USA, the aging superpower, and then China, the superpower on the rise. And 
what we're going to look at is, you know, what makes a superpower? How do they influence things around around the world? How do they, they shape things that go on internationally? And then partly how are they shaped by it? And what, what are some of the historical things they've done? And what are the current arguments and debates and issues um, around those things? Uh, then we come to physical geography. There's going to be loads more detail on tectonic processes and hazards. So if you enjoyed that at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, we're really going to dig deep into the processes that go into eruptions, the processes that go into earthquakes, uh, and really look in detail at that. And then when we look at it in terms of hazards, we have to bring in a whole variety of factors. I mean, there's a fantastic uh, book that your teachers have all read and, and we've, we've discussed, which is called, well, I can't remember the name of it, to be honest. It's um, Disasters by Design, I think, is, is the rough title. And it says there are no such things as natural disasters. These are human errors. These are, uh, you know, issues and problems of our making. And so that's a really interesting thing to look at, and we can look at it. Um, then there's coastal landscapes. Coastal landscapes are classic uh, two-day field trip that Mr. Coates leads. Um, looking in much more detail, not because you've done the processes at Key Stage 4, GCSE. And what we're going to move towards now is those interrelationships, how the processes interact with each other to create the dynamic environment that we that we get at coasts. Um, and as always, we look into to management and other aspects of it and to take our scale outward and look at things such as you can see on the, the slide there, environmental refugees. But it's about those dynamic relationships between interacting processes, really getting into the heart of some geography. Similarly, we've got the carbon cycle. I would argue, even as a human geographer, this is the most important thing to understand. This is the driving force of how climate change or cl climate is changing. And perhaps even we could go as far as to say breaking down our, our, our climate, but we need to understand how it works. And with this, you know, once you've done this, there's an opportunity to start to see, right, this is how it works. This is how things can be preserved and saved and, and slowed down and, and improvements made to, to what is to come. Similarly, we've got the water cycle. We all need water. We can't go for particularly long without it. If climate is changing, the water cycle will change. So we need to understand how does it work? What does it, uh, what influences, what, what, what changes are undergoing and what can be done to, um, I want to say the word ameliorate, uh, you know, slow down those changes, lessen those changes. In terms of what, you know, field work, we have a variety of pieces of field work, but, I, you know, it's coronavirus. I can't, I can't promise that we'll get out. It looks, looks pretty good at the moment, but who knows? And we'll heaven, move heaven and earth to do it. But there are the places. So in terms of sort of recapping it, this is what geography offers more generally in terms of your skills. Okay. You know, we're, we're, we're very much between subjects in terms of we use mathematical and statistical skills. We use uh, the design process from science in terms of how we create our and test our, our theories. But we also analyze texts. We also bring in, um, to be perfectly honest, a little bit of visual interpretation as well, which is, is more what photography does. So we, we take from different things, but we have our own uh, ways of looking at the world, which you'll, you'll look at, which is to do with processes, interrelationships uh, and scales. That's Those are our kind of key concepts. And you, you can use these things you can see in front of you to to deploy those concepts in different different places and con um, contexts. So, yeah, geography is a subject that really goes with anything, uh, kind of like ketchup, to be honest with you. 
which I think goes with everything. Um, and that's it. I look forward to seeing you in the future. And I'd leave you with some geographical images for you to have a quick look at and have a think about how do those relate to the different things that you've just seen. All right, see you soon.